let's go around the national as we do every day on this program. And let's start in Boston with the St. Louis Blues going to Beantown and getting a big win last night. And Tory Krug on his birthday, nonetheless. Look at that. Hadn't played in 10 games. Looked like he was right in midseason form there. Snaps it past Swayman. The Blues win their sixth straight. And uh, what I really enjoyed is after the game is that Craig Berube, we think Craig Berube is the tough guy behind the bench. Look at this. After the game comes up, yeah, happy birthday, big guy. Look at that big smile. Jim Montgomery coming over. It's nice to see, right? I mean, you guys yeah. have been on the, you know, on, you have a big moment. It's nice when the coach comes over and gives you a little out of boy. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think it means a lot. You see Tory Krug smiling there. He might be smiling because he did, he danced his former captain, Drew <laughs> Bergeron. So it's not like he just danced anybody. Yeah, he danced that's true. One of the best guys in the league defensively. So uh, yeah, it was a big, uh, big moment. I'm sure for Tory Krug. Yeah, it is, it's nice to know the coach has your back, you know. It's yeah. nice to know when you get a pat in the back and rather than usually – usually just see the coach with a kick in the butt, not physically <laughs> yeah. anymore, but it's yeah. more the, you know, getting yelled at. But uh, that's why St. Louis is such a special team. And, and when you've got players – or player coaches like Craig Berube – who played the style of, of team game that he that kept him in the league for so long? He was so good at, and now he's bringing that to the team. He's patting the guys on the back, and it's nice to know that your coach appreciates. And sometimes you play or the rapper, and you, you don't even think the coach is watching what you're doing out there. He sees, you see, oh, I'm going to pull this out. Oh, uh, what do you do out there? He's like, oh, oh, what do you do out there? It's nice to know that the coach is watching and appreciates uh, the effort, and also acknowledges that hey, I'm sure he knew it was his birthday. Like, yeah. They don't they they don't come out a lot. You don't see that personality a lot. But when a coach recognizes that, it's uh, everybody in the team knows it, and it's not a surprise with uh, Craig Berube. And good and coaches are always happy to have good players come back in the lineup. So that yeah, was yeah. the really good news in that situation. Another really good player came back in the lineup for the Vegas Golden Knights last night. It was in a losing effort in overtime, but I'm sure that Pete DeBoer was happy to see his captain back out there, Mark Stone. Look at this play by Stone, guys. I mean, that's Quinn Hughes. He just picks his pocket and gets two great scoring chances in the second period. He brings a lot to the table, and he was in the mix last night. Yeah, I mean, he, he's been severely missed all, all season when he's, when he's been out. And I don't think this team would even be in this predicament if he was able to be healthy. I think he's that important to them. And, and, and right here, even the, the fact that in nowadays game and rules, it's very hard to strip guys of pucks without taking a penalty. Yeah. Like, it's extremely hard. Like, you're not even allowed to go stick on stick in a lot of situations. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he picks this clean. I love and the that, skate, too. He yeah. finds the puck, yeah. kicks it back. Great scoring yeah. chance. So it's 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 big, big goal that they scored late in that game because that was really bad if they didn't get they a get point. They got a point. They tied it up. It's what was there, though. 40 yeah. seconds left or something? Yep. It was a shaky yep. door with that goal. Um that helps, but having this guy back, if he can contribute down the stretch, maybe they got a shot here to get in. Yeah, he's a point-per-game guy, 28 points, 29 games. Yep. And, and the way he reaches, I laugh when I watch that because he, he uses the long stick, and oh, he's yeah. always up there. If he's not number one, he's, he's in the top five for takeaways in the game. And you said it, to be able to reach in and pick that puck off the stick of a very talented Quinn Hughes yeah. without catching a foot, without getting a hooking penalty, and without even lifting the stick, he just reaches around and a quick little flick, and like you can't, like, you can't touch him now. So like, you, yeah, you can't even like, even if the shaft of his stick hits his arm and you get the blade, like it might right. call a penalty. That's yeah. right. So he's just very like that was pretty that, smooth. That was smooth. He's yeah, and that, that's what he's really good at is just stripping pucks, and and he's been good at it for a long time. Uh, I think this team has really missed their captain. Uh, he brings a different element. He's the captain for a reason. He's not just the captain because he's a good player. I mean, he obviously brings something in the room. And this team, I know they've had a lot of injuries, but if you keep your captain in the lineup, sometimes, you know, he, he's the guy who rallies the troops when everything is down or you're missing a few guys. Comes up with a big play like that in a big game. And uh, I mean, you score that many goals on the road. Like, you yeah. like to think you're going to win the game. Yeah, absolutely. Shea Theodore with a good game as well. He had two goals in the game for Vegas. Now, they continue on this road trip, Vegas, and uh, it's tight in the Western Conference, right? And the, even for Vancouver, who won last night, they didn't get the help they were looking for because Dallas ended up uh, winning their game one nothing. You can see it right here. Nashville found a way to win. St. Louis, those teams are a little bit further ahead. But, like, L.A. and Dallas are the ones they're really looking at, and they both ended up winning. So Vegas gets a point. Vancouver's still hanging around. They've won four in a row. They've got Arizona next. It's a one-game season for all these teams, right? So they got Arizona next at home. They can win that one. they got to hope. L.A. is playing uh, Colorado tonight. 
that's a game where we figure LA is not likely going to have success. So, uh, you know, you see the race right here. It's pretty cut and dry at this point, right, Reader? Uh, it is, and I like what Rupper was talking about earlier in the day. We were chatting standings, and, and it's it's kind of like that. You're going on a little horse race, a little horse game where yeah, they, yep. they, they they move, and yep. it, is it a card game? Shooting shoot the water, and, and yeah, the, yeah, and, and they just yeah, and they just <laughs> yeah, slowly keep yeah. moving, and it's okay. You win one, you jump ahead. No, the other guy comes yeah. this way, and they're. This is going to go right down to the wire. Uh, the Los Angeles Kings, they've got the best uh, uh, strength of schedule coming up. Yeah, this ab- is after after, after after Colorado. Yeah, but Vegas is, is in Edmonton and Calgary. Yeah. And Edmonton oh. can, can solidify their playoff p- picture probably yeah. if they win that, that next game against, uh, against Vegas. Yeah. And it's just going to go back and forth. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, the key is the Pacific Division. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be as much wild card. It's right. going to be who's going to end up it, top three it, it falls in the on, Pacific. It's it's the head of the LA Kings. Like yeah. that's the yeah. target. That's it. Yes. That's, the, that's, that's it. in the crosshairs. The LA yeah. Kings for probably, and I, I think uh, when you're talking about the Canucks, the Canucks have got eight games left. They're gonna have to go seven of eight, and they still might not get it. Yeah. They gotta go probably they're gonna, they're gonna eight to, for eight. They're, they're probably gonna have, have to, to roll eight it. They're yeah. gonna have to and, roll. Uh, so, regulation. Re- they're going to regulation. regulation. And then when you look at a team like Vegas, who is three points ahead of them, uh, as you look right here, it, you know maybe Vegas is. Uh, all right. So if you go, if that's fourteen, if that's ninety six, ninety seven points is what's getting you in. Just do the math on on Vegas. Then what Vegas yeah. has to do. I mean, yeah. they've, they've got to win five, six, seven of those six, of their games. All right. Six is ninety seven points. Six yeah. of eight, they've got to win. And so. I get, and yeah. it's, well, let's it's, leave, it's leave those up there for a second because just here's a want to just give you how this changes, right? It can change quick. LA loses tonight. They stay at 88 points. Vancouver beats Arizona tomorrow night. Now they're at 84. They're four back. They have a game in hand and they play to, they play them down the stretch. Yeah. So to your point, Rupert, you're right. I mean, the Canucks are probably going to have to win most of their remaining games, but they got Dallas coming up. They've got some They've got heads. LA yeah. coming up. And if the Vegas Golden Knights miss the playoffs, they could thank our buddy Bruce Boudreaux because they just finished a series of playing three games in the last ten days or so. The Vancouver Canucks got five out of those six points. Vegas only ended up getting three. And really, the Canucks could have won all three games. They won two of them. So at the end of the day, that's the that's the yin and the yang for teams that are chasing like that. They knock each other out. Here's, yeah, it's true. It, right? And it, yeah, it goes back and forth, and it's the head-to-heads are huge. Here, here's something, though, with Vancouver. Let's say yeah. that Bruce gets it going again, and yeah. his crew, I mean, they, he has been getting it going yeah. as of late. They've been winning yeah. again. Their last two games are against Calgary and Edmonton. Yeah. I don't know if that's the right yeah. order, but anyways, that's their last yep. two games. Yep. No, L- no, no, L.A. L.A. Oh, sorry. At, at home, home against L.A. And then in, in Edmonton. Edmonton, last in Edmonton. game of the Wrap year. It up. And that's going to be a tough one. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, but but it's some of these teams that you match up with at the end, you got to take care of the business when you can. If you're going to play right. a team, if you're playing Edmonton, Edmonton, maybe you might see Edmonton without Connor for the day. Yeah. Maybe you might see yeah, Atlanta. That's, that's a yeah. very good point. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, oh boy. that could be something yeah. that could drive other fan bases yeah. nuts. It's like, yeah. all right, our team's in as long as yeah. Edmonton <laughs> beats Vancouver. And their yeah. Edmonton's like, well, we're going to sit Connor and Leon <laughs> yeah. tonight. Yeah. So we're going to rest them. Like, this could be really interesting down the stretch. Yeah. Yeah. And Vegas finishes up. They have a tough schedule, like you mentioned. Calgary and Edmonton next. They go home and then they have some games. Winnable, New Jersey. Winnable, San Jose. Capitals visit them. That'll be a tough game. And then they finish out three on the road. Dallas, Chicago, Dallas in the mix, right? That's going to be, it could be a huge game. Chicago and then St. Louis. And who knocked, you know, St. Louis, I would think, would love nothing more than to send Vegas out if it comes yeah. down to the last game. So you're right. I, I mean, it's one thing to look at these and say they got to do this, they got to do that. That's the beauty and the fun of watching it down the stretch. It doesn't take much for the pitcher to change. With a win here or a loss there. So I'll be curious. Because I didn't think, I thought Vegas was done like two, three weeks ago and they've yeah. kind of found their way back found their in. Because teams always end up beating somebody that you don't think they're going to beat and then they lose to somebody. New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. New Jersey and Dallas. Yep. There you go. Saturday a game afternoon. That, that was a game in hand on Vegas and they yep. lose three to one. Yeah. Then no, they go so. and beat Tampa. Yeah, exactly. So uh, just check the schedule. LA's final game is at Vancouver. Yeah, so there you uh, go. that that could be depending on you know Vegas yeah. loses a few in there. Yeah. That and could be done. to get that LA could in. be that could be the play-in game. So we yeah. don't want play-in games because we only want 16 teams in. Yeah. But that could be the play-in game right well, there. That's for, a topic for, for another time. Whether there should yeah. be more than 16 yeah. or not. That's it. No, there shouldn't. We're uh, good. Well, we're good at 16. Right. Well, we'll discuss it another we're time. But for now, we will talk about this game tonight with the Kings and the Avs because, again. 
L.A. really needs the game. I mean, if they could get a point or That's two huge. out of this game, wouldn't it yeah. be huge for them? Absolutely huge. I mean, when you look at uh, – coaches break it down and look at individual teams. So we want to get points off of every team in the league. And then they'll look at what have other teams done against this team. So if L.A. can say, hey, we can get so many points against the Avs, has Vegas or Vancouver done the same? And at the end of the day, if you're if you're ahead of the other teams, you're in the playoffs, right? Yeah. So for, for them to come out of this little two-game road trip, Chicago and Colorado, with three points, I know it's not a win, but it's 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 a point. It'd be a huge point. At this, yes. At any time of the year. Not, you know, we're looking at the standings, yeah. but at any time of the year, it'd be fantastic. Van went in there and won. A couple yeah. weeks ago, Vancouver went in there and then with Yara Halak, and they got the job done. So these yeah. are the things you don't expect. And, you know, it's second of a back-to-back for L.A. I think they've been fairly good in those situations. Going into altitude, Colorado sitting there. I mean, all the, you know, all the arrows point in one direction, right? Yeah, I mean, it. You would have to think, and I think that's what Reader's saying, like, it, this is not a game you're supposed to win if you're the LA Kings. Yeah. So you got to find a way. You got to earn your spot in the playoffs. Every team has to do that. So um, it's an opportunity. I think they'll be jacked up for it. This was, uh, we'll get into our picks later, but this, I was struggling with this one. I was struggling with this one because it's just, you know, the importance of the game. Yeah. So we have to assume, it doesn't always happen that way, but we have to assume LA is going to come out. Playing last night, but they're going to come out and they're going to have a good gutsy first period and see if they can yeah. get going. And the, uh, the, but another thing on that, the Avs, it's not like the Avs are, ah, we're, we know we're in first. The Avs are playing for the Presidents. Yeah. Uh, they're tied with Florida. They're right up at there. the double check. Yeah. So they're, yeah. they're, they're tied with Florida. Yep, right here. Uh, yep. And, yes, they and, are. And, and they've got the game in hand, in which hand. is today's game. The game in hand. And I think 53 is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is a team record for wins. May for well ties. Be. Yeah. Uh, the abs, I'm not 100% sure on that, but they're getting awful close. But it, it, this game means something for the yeah. abs, points wise. The, yeah. You want to be number one. Like everybody, oh, you don't want to win the President's Trophy. Yeah, you do. It's nothing like having game seven at home. And, and it's not bad luck. Everybody thinks, oh, you, you don't want to win it because it's bad luck. You know, I disagree with that. Last two I won, I won Cup, so that's why I'm disagreeing with that. So I'm backing that up. But <laughs> other teams might disagree with that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this is, this is something that the. That uh, the Avs are looking at. Plus, if you have the opportunity to knock the team out of the playoffs in the regular season, in the last couple of weeks, you do it. Yeah. Because nothing worse than having a bad game against them in the regular season. Then you play them in the in the playoffs. You're like, if we had just beat them back in April, yeah. we wouldn't be playing them now. Or back in March, we we wouldn't be playing them now, and they wouldn't be here, and we wouldn't be down a couple games in the playoffs. So yeah. you can never be too early to knock teams out of the playoffs. And the Avalanche made an addition today. They've added, uh, I believe it's Ben Meyer from the University of Minnesota, who was a really good player, played on the Olympic team for Team USA, and uh, he was someone that was sought after by a lot of teams. That's just another little piece of the puzzle. You don't know if he's going to have a big impact, but it's always nice to have some fresh young legs coming in late in the season to kind of help you out. And you can see it there, signing with the Avs and a captain in Minnesota, and they're Everybody speaks really in glowing terms of this guy, so uh, he comes into a situation where they have a really great team, and uh, he won't be asked to do a ton. And here's a little bit more news. This is from Frank Sarvalli. Myers will be burning the first year of his ELC this year. We're seeing that more, even though uh, he isn't eligible to play in the playoffs. So there you go. So that you know, yeah, being a non-drafted player. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So that. So let me be clear on that. He will not be able to play in the playoffs, but it's a two-year deal. Expires in 2023. So that's the kind of cost of doing business to add another good player. That that right there shows you a great breakdown by Frank Cervelli. Yeah. It, it shows you how important it is now. And I was talking with Mike Motto about it yesterday. Yeah. You know, it used to not be like that. College players would come out and be like, hey, great season. Here's your workout program. We'll see you in the fall for training yeah. camp, right? Like now it's you're getting these guys. The fact that the teams are willing to burn a year of entry level contracts that's, is yep. it shows you how valuable these next eight games are like uh, however much he plays or just even being around the group for the playoffs experience what this team is going to yep. do yep. that means more than us in a year of paying you like that's that's impressive yeah and, and good for ben myers to, to sign because he had 32 teams that's to sign right. with that's to right sign with the you know right now possibly President's Trophy, one of the best teams in the National Hockey League, and it's normally a sign with a team where you know I can gonna make, play I'm going right to play, I'm going to play in the top six forwards. Well, I'm sorry, but you're right now we're not fitting in the top six. But Joe Sackick and your uh, general manager are always looking for the future. This is a future signing because he can't play in the playoffs. But you said it; if he, he sticks around for the the year 
Gets in a bunch of games now. Burns the one year for him, yeah. which is great. Gets the experience. The Avs going a good playoff front. Let's say they win the cup and he's there. They're going to have changeovers next year. That's Every right. team has changeover. Every team with salary cap, you've got to bring in yeah. young players. That's, and, the, that's the point I want yeah. to tag it on is that, okay, we look at it from the standpoint is, hey, I want to go to a team where I want to play. And I'm going to get put in prime spots. And we see other guys make that decision. Some people are like, why is he choosing there? He ain't yeah. going to play there. Well, guess what? This team with certain contracts kicking Absolutely. in in Colorado, yep. they're going to have to move some money out. Yeah. And they're going to have to look just like all teams do now. When you have high-end players like Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr, these types of players, you need entry-level contracts. Absolutely. And you need Absolutely. them to perform at a high level. So this could be a great opportunity. Maybe not right today, but next year, the year after that. Really good decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cadre's a big one. There you Ooh, go, right? They're going to have to try to figure out how to sign. Plus, he's not 20 years old. He's not a player coming out of junior. He's not 20 years old. Yeah. I mean, 20, is it 23? Yeah. 23 years old. So that's 23 years old. Well, guys coming out of junior are three years professional experience. Well, he's yeah. got that experience uh, uh, playing college, and he's yeah. he's older and mature. And you see a lot more players less time in the American League and sliding into the NHL. Um, and I think that's I, I'm sure that's what Joe Sackick's thinking about. All right, this is a player we can use immediately and can be a possible top six, if not top nine forward, if his if his offense continues the way it did through his college career. But yeah, uh, yeah good for it's a gutsy signing to sign with the best team in the league. Yeah. Yeah. A week before two weeks, but that's two and a half weeks but before the, playoffs. To Rupper's point, that's the selling point. It's yeah. like, hey, there's going to be opportunity here. Something's going to open oh, for sure. the salary cap. It's a free player, really, to go out and get a guy like that. Yeah. He's a free player. You don't have to draft him. You don't have to overpay him because he's on an ELC. All you have to do is kind of burn that year. That's the cost of doing business, as I mentioned. Nice signing for the Avalanche.